Hi, this is Nathan Sheridan, and this is The Christian Beat. Hey everyone, it's Herman Jesse here with The Christian Beat. We're so happy today to welcome Nathan Sheridan. Thanks for hanging out with us. Nice to see you guys. We Thank appreciate you so it. Uh, sure, so we'll go uh, ahead and get started. So since we last uh, talked with you, you were about to embark on a set of tour uh, dates that you had set up uh, over the past so many months. How did that experience go? What was, you know, the the piece of the night that stood out to you most? Um, I assume we talk about the small town uh, worship tour. Yeah. Uh, that was an amazing tour. Uh, we went out, I think it was close to 40 dates all across America. And uh, night after night after night, you know, we saw, I mean, not just great crowds and, you know, just, you know, meeting some great people, but we got a sense going through these small communities of how, like, forgotten people are, you know, and how, you know, all the, all the Christian concerts seem to, you know, gravitate towards larger cities, you know, naturally. Um, but we were super, super blessed to be able to just get everybody on one bus, you know, get all the equipment behind one bus and just go, you know, night after night to these small towns and uh, meet people who... You know, every night they would say, wow, I can't believe you guys came here, you know, to, to our little town of, you know, 500 people or 700 people. So um, they were really, really blessed by it, and I was super blessed by it, too, and encouraged. Um, I mean, we even got to go to places like, you know, the Indian reservations and things like that, which was really super special. And, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of just hurting people all over, you know, that um, in these small, you know, rural communities. And they don't, you know, find a lot, you know, they don't have a lot of uh, outlets you know, uh, for Christian music or really just ministry in general. So it was really, really special. And uh, I'm actually going to be doing it again this year. So oh, well, awesome. super special. Awesome. You got to kind of meet people where they're at. In, in yeah, small towns, which is, absolutely. Yeah. Which is super cool. What did life on the road kind of <clears throat> teach you personally, professionally? That's a great question. Um, it definitely gives you um, a better idea of, you know, I mean, like on Instagram and stuff, maybe you go and look at your favorite artist, you know, and you see everything that they want you to see, right? Um, which is sometimes how I am too, you know, I mean, I post the, the good pictures and the great moments and stuff like that, but on the road, I mean, there are so many different obstacles to overcome, you know, not just being on the bus with a lot of people, but also just, you know, I mean, you're tired, you know, you're tired a lot, sure. you know, you don't get a, you know, you don't always get a ton of sleep and it's just night after night. It's grunt work, as I like to say. A lot of it's grunt work and a lot of it, I mean, it's not easy, you know, and uh, it goes to show, though, that there's nothing, I mean, nothing comes easy if you want to do it well. You know, I say everything is difficult if you really want to do it well. Um, you know, people will ask me, you know, oh, is guitar an easy instrument to learn? And it's, a, and it's like, no, it's not easy if you want to learn how to do it right you know and I think even being a musician it's easy to just you know go into the studio and you know uh, put out some songs and stuff like that but it's a whole different realm to actually get there on get out on the road and go meet these people where they're at real you know live people not through social media and getting on stage and singing these songs and actually putting the work into it um, and knowing that what I'm doing is so tangible it's not just something that is you know through Spotify or through, you know, Apple Music. It's very tangible and there really are people out there who, you know, love my music and, you know, want to meet me, but are also, you know, are wanting Christian artists in general to come minister to them, you know? So, um, yeah, it's talk, it definitely just gave me a whole different uh, point of view on um, music in general. You know, it's not just all sunshine and rainbows, as they say, so. <laughs> That's awesome. So what song did the fans most connect with that you performed live? They most connected to uh, my song, Broken With You, which is the name of my album. Uh, Broken With You is just a song about, you know, everything I've been through in life, um, you know, with my parents, uh, you know, walking out on me and my sister through, you know, losing my sister and growing up without a real clear focus in life, you know, and it, it was also a song about, you know, asking God where he had been through all those moments. And then at the end of the song, coming to the realization that he has been there the whole time. You know, and I think that really spoke to a lot of people, you know, because so many people have had people walk out on them, you know, had their mothers walk out on their fathers or somebody close to them. And they've been through bad relationships or, you know, they were abused. And I mean, so, so many people that related to that and what I've been through. And I think, you know, I mean, every night there was somebody that would come up to me and say, hey, Nathan, that song is my story, you know, and that that's how you kind of know which songs are really hitting people, you know, every single night. And it, what's crazy is I would have grandmothers coming up to me and saying, 
I'm raising a child right now that, you know, uh, you know, isn't he isn't you know mine. He's my daughter's, you know, and my daughter is in prison right now, and you know she was off on drugs and stuff like that. Very similar to my story, right? And um, and then I would have children come up saying, you know, my dad isn't in my life or my mom's not in my life and things like that. So that you know is definitely the song that was you know just hitting people right there and. Uh, night after night after night and that's why the song never gets old it never gets old because I always get to hear people's you know testimony after my testimony you know seems to unleash other people's testimony it's like you know and they start sharing things that they have never shared before so really really exciting about that when did you first kind of feel that calling to kind of bring your story out and to kind of reach a larger audience <sighs> it was a slow progression I, I say you know I mean I was in the military for, I joined right at 17. I was, you know, in, in for six years <clears throat> in the National Guard. So I was in reserve status. And before then, I, I had played a little bit in youth group and stuff like that at church. But I never saw music as, you know, a viable option for my life. It was always just something that I did as a hobby and, you know, also as a ministry as well. But I didn't, at that time, I wasn't really seeing the ministry part of it yet. And then once I went overseas, you know, uh, to Kuwait and started leading worship there for the troops and things like that, that's when I really saw some doors open. And I think through the, just the constant encouragement of uh, other people in ministry, but also just, you know, uh, the congregation in general, you know, soldiers would be like, you know, we love your voice. We think you're anointed, you know, things like that. And, um, that would always just really, really encourage me and, uh, and humble me as well. And that's when I decided to come home and how to pursue music further, but it's been all divinely orchestrated, as I like to say. I mean, God has really just, you know, pushed me into this, um, in some ways against my will, you know what I'm saying? But also, you know, I've also had to put myself in alignment, though, with him so that I can, you know, get to these new heights and stuff like that. But um, it was never something that I pictured myself doing. Like, if you would ask me this, you know, four or five years ago, I would have a completely different answer. You know, I, w I wouldn't even have seen this as an option. So, but I'm super, super blessed, you know, to be here today and you know, talking with you guys and being in ministry actively. And this is like all I do, you know, so yeah. amazing how God has just opened those doors you know, like that. Absolutely. You said it was over time and a gradual process. Do you, can you go back now in retrospect and, and see that there's that one moment that really changed it for you even if it didn't change it all at once but it was that one moment where you just clicked for you it's so hard to say because like you said even though it has been a gradual thing it's like there have always been those moments that are mm -hmm. like hit you like wow you know and uh i remember a big one was when i had my best friend luke he he said that he was in california and uh, he was just kind of like at the beach and I guess, you know, just reminiscing and stuff like that and thinking about, and me and him hadn't, hadn't talked in quite a while actually. We were still good friends, but uh, he had just got done with audio engineering school and stuff like that. And he uh, just called me up after I got deployed, you know, and I was already thinking about, you know, maybe I could do something with music. Maybe I could, you know, go a little bit further with this, but I didn't know how, you know, that's the thing. I just didn't know how. And, um, but he called me up and said, you know, I was I was just thinking about you and you know I feel like God's speaking man I think we should get in the studio I think you really need to pursue this and uh, you know that was really kind of a thing that just like wow I mean this is there here's another person who's willing to you know not only record me totally for free you know mm -hmm. on his on his own time yeah. you know and he wants me to come in and he thinks that there's something to this even when I don't think there's something to it and that's what's amazing is there's always been other people that saw something to it when I didn't see anything it so it's just like now I'm I'm pretty you know responsive to other people I listen to people when they tell me something <laughs> you know because my judgment is not always the best but uh, you know and then getting I got invited to a conference in Nashville uh, just randomly somebody found my music online and I, it was called the objective and they actually just had the same conference again where they invite you know no-name artists to come in and just you know showcase their music and get you know get mentored by these people and it was free for me to go and they just invited me out and that's when I met my first manager, and through that manager, I got hooked up with a producer, and it just snowballed. It's the snowball effect. So Absolutely. all those, all, you know, and when I was at the objective, I, you know, it was me and Luke yet again. We were like sleeping mm -hmm. in our car, you know, <laughs> just for a few days because we didn't want to pay for hotels and 
oh, we wanted to pay for hotels. We didn't have the money to pay for <laughs> hotels. But, um, you know, and that, after that, you know, and getting, and getting that call back saying, you know, we really loved you at this conference and we think we want to go further with it. Um, and I think there's potential in you. Again, listening to other people and just, you know, I always, I've always just had to thrive off that encouragement because it's been so, so hard to encourage myself. But now I'm at a point, luckily, that it's like, you know, Nathan, this is what you're supposed to be doing. It's been, it's been God the whole time saying, Nathan, don't you see it? You know, I put all these different people in your life to show you this is what you should do. So many different moments. Um, even when I didn't realize it at the time, I can look back and be like, wow, yeah. that was God, you know, speaking to me. So thinking back to how far you've been and kind of what lies ahead, what do you think are going to be your measures for success? You know, that's a really good question. I mean, there is... Because this is the music industry, um, there's always a measure of success of like record sales and um, streams and things like that. And historically, it's always been that way. We that's how we measure our success as an artist, as a musician. But I think there's a different responsibility in Christian music um, of you know the ministry aspect. You know, we can't lose sight of the ministry aspect. Otherwise, it's just. It's just a diff, you know, it's just music, you know, and I, I believe that, you know, God should speak through our music, you know, he should be speaking through our music and our music should be ministering to people. And that's really, really what it's about. I mean, I don't, I just don't see that, you know, people have asked me this, and Nathan, why don't you go country? Why don't you, you know, folk? I mean, there's more money in it and, you know, these, and there is more money to be made elsewhere, but that's just not what, that's not where my heart is because I see how God has opened the doors for me. And I don't see how at this point I could, you know, go astray and go in my direction that, you know, I would, I would maybe go um, just to, you know, maybe make my bank account a little bit bigger or something like that. And I think it's just important not to lose sight of that. I mean, we're here to minister to people, to save souls to the kingdom. I mean, these are the things that are important and that's how we should be measuring our, our success. You know, what's success in God's eyes? I mean, those are, th those are questions we need to be asking ourselves because obviously God doesn't see money as success. Um, he may give you money. You know, and he, you know, he may give you, you know, the desires of your heart beyond just what, you know, um, you know, what is of the kingdom. You know, he'll give you earthly, you know, desires as well. But at the same time, that's not what, you know, it's that's not what we strive for. And so, and even lately, it's been hard to look past that. You know, hard to look past. Well, have I sold enough records? Have I gotten enough streams and things like that? But then I'm like, especially when I'm on the road and I'm meeting people where they're where they're at. And, you know, getting to hear so many different stories, that's when I realized, wow, this is so much bigger than just, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's really, really, you have to humble yourself. You have to humble yourself and realize that this isn't about you. You know, it can't be about you. And a lot of times it becomes about you, you know, mm -hmm. and then you have to take a step back and realize that, hey, this is about, this is about God. This is about Jesus. So. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your either short-term and long-term kind of goals and visions um, to work towards that ministry and making sure that you can share that with others? Long-term goals, I mean, I would eventually love to be on the road a lot more. Um, <clears throat> beginning, you know, any artist just starting out, it's hard to get on the road, you know. There's obviously the logistics part of it and just having the production, having the sound, and being able to actually get to these places is a huge operation. And uh, that's something I'm really working towards is just how can I be out on the road more? How can I be ministering to people more? Um, because it's so hard to do. You can't just do it through social media. You can't just, I mean, there, there are ways to do that. You can post an inspirational quote. You can, you can message somebody back that messaged you and stuff like that. But as far as, I, the where I've seen the most impact, you know, has been, somebody coming up to the merchandise table and saying, hey, that song really, really spoke to me. And every time that happens, I think about how can I do this more? How can I, how can every other day I be doing this, <laughs> you know? So uh, that's my next, my next goal. And it's probably my, you know, my main goal right now. Besides just putting out, you know, I mean, of course I want to put out, put out another record. I want to write more music and I want to, I want to see success in that way. But really me, I love the road. I love, I love meeting people and I love hearing their stories and I love, you know, knowing that what I'm doing, you know, matters. And uh, so that's my, that's my ultimate goal is just, man, getting out to these people and being able to do it consistently. So 
but we'll see how long it takes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wish you nothing but the best. We're so happy to connect with you here today. Um, stay tuned, more with Nathan Sheridan coming up.